Hello everyone, this is Alina Boyd, your host at the Heart Centered Life Podcast. This is episode 6, Starting the Creative Journey. The process of creating something meaningful that can have a positive impact on your life and in the world is never easy. It actually takes a lot of courage to create creative works and distribute them to the world. We in fact talked about this in episode 4, on how to find the courage to be creative. In today's episode, I interview Latoya Lawson. She's an emerging author in Jackson, and we talk about her new book, Masiter, and her own creative journey. Latoya has helpful tips on starting the journey, but basically what Latoya says is that we have to start the creative journey somewhere and do a little bit every day to build up that creative um, muscle. Before you listen to the podcast... I do want to mention that this interview was actually recorded on video and you can actually watch the video on my blog. So if you want to watch the video, just go to www.alinaboyd.com and uh, go to the blog posts and the blog entry for the video is dated December 16, 2019. The other thing that I had wanted to mention is that this recording was made in the Museum of Art in downtown Jackson And it was a little bit noisy when we uh, did the recording because there was a group that was actually setting up for lunch right beside us. Uh, So please forgive the uh, background noise and, um, you know, I'll be a little bit more um, vigilant when selecting a interview spot the next time. Uh, This is also the episode that will launch the Heart Centered Life podcast. And so I'm really excited for this episode. Uh, I hope you will enjoy the interview with Latoya. And of course, if you have any comments or feedback, I would love to hear from you. So without further ado, here is the interview with Latoya Lawson. So today, I have Latoya Lawson. We actually met just before Thanksgiving this Uh year. That's correct, yeah. At Lemuria Bookstore, right. where uh, Latoya was having her um, book signing ceremony. Mm-hmm. And we met by chance because my daughter ran up to her. <laughs> uh, I was playing pick Yes. Behind the signs, behind the banners. Behind the banners, yeah. right? And, uh, and we started talking. And, and she's got an amazing story. I mean, an amazing book that I finished reading, Masita, and the reviews were, you know, it's an amazing book, it's a page turner, it's intriguing, it's suspenseful, and, and I read it and I think, uh, I, I loved it, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't put it down, I'm actually waiting for the next installment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll let Latoya tell us about her book and um, her experiences writing the book. Okay, basically Masita is about a young African-American girl which is Victoria Lewis. Mm -hmm. Um, She's the main character. And she is basically a single mother who wants a career change and wants a better life for herself and her daughter. So she starts working as a caregiver. And during the process of working as a caregiver, she gets in a complicated situation where the family that she's working for well, the husband that she's working for decides... Mr. Mr. Lane. Mr. Lane, yeah. Mr. Lane decides that he has other intentions for his wife, which he basically solicits her to help him get away with the murder of his wife. And so Victoria becomes the must sitter. As you go toward the end of the book, you'll see that this is basically her new career. Right. She's basically like a hitter sitter. The end, ending of this book sets the tone for the next installment. Yes. Right. So at the end of the towards the end of the book, Mr. Lane introduces her to two of his friends, Mr. and Mrs. Miss Kelly. Yes. Uh, who, who, uh, who <laughs> yeah. and 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 the reason why I laugh is because Miss Kelly is actually the name of a furniture store yeah. here in Mississippi. Right. Uh, the thing that I loved about the book is that, or the the characters themselves were intriguing. I, I think they were really well developed. But there there are also so many references to things and places in Mississippi. Right, right. So one of the things that um, I found really intriguing is how you actually worked a lot of the, um, you know, the bigotry, the racism, the you know, the issues that 
the Deep South faces with racism and, and right. the, the history. Talk a little bit about how that found its way into the book. Well, actually, I would say it's, it's easy to place it in the book because mm -hmm. it's, it's reality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the reality of today. You know, uh, <clears throat> not too long ago, maybe like a month or so ago, I was at a book signing and I was called the N-word a couple of times. So this isn't something that is buried or used to happen. And it's not historic. I mean, it's the, the connection. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that existed in history, right? It still exists today. It still exists like today, yes. And so it was easy to add that into the story because it's reality, basically. Mm -hmm. But Victoria, she kind of handles it on her own in the book mm -hmm. like she it's like she doesn't let it phase her yes. because she's on a mission right so she doesn't really let it phase her right and and it's also interesting um that you have uh, built victoria to be this really strong african-american woman right right who ha who knows exactly what she wants but the the story behind Victoria's, um, you know, career trajectory, uh, it's it's really interesting because you you built her up as a really strong African American woman, mm -hmm. um, and like I say, she knows exactly what she wants. Right, she wanted a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Right, right, and she was willing, um, you know, to make certain compromises. Right, right and work with Mr. Mr. Lay. Right. Um, All while still having a conscience. I mean, it bothered yeah. her, but then she, she, it bothered her, but she kind of made herself feel good, like okay, she was gonna die anyway, you know. Yes. So. Yes. And she still always um, mentions her religion, you know, mm -hmm. in the book, and you know what, you know, her role model would say, mm -hmm. without trying to give too much of the book away, but. In reality, like mm -hmm. that's what we're faced with today. Yeah, a lot. You know? Yeah, absolutely. The the certain the references that she makes to her grandmother, who was a sitter like her, mm -hmm. um, and the struggles that her grandmother had, um, you know. And and it's interesting that you mentioned that her grandmother had a, a situation where where if she brought her children to work with her, they couldn't play with. The, the kids, kids of right. employers, right, mm -hmm. and especially if they were of a different uh, different race, uh, right. white white in this particular case, right. And so, so it's it's so interesting that you um, into the book, so you, you highlight the you know the injustice, mm -hmm. the um, the racism, the bigotry that exists right. in a story, you know, without drawing overt attention to the reality, right. Um, how much of your background? An experience played into how the story played out in, in the book. Um, basically, I used to own a caregiving service. Uh huh. So, which I, you started when you were twenty three. Twenty three, right? Yeah. So, um, I actually started sitting with people at the age of nineteen, mm -hmm. and I started my own business at the age of twenty three. Mm -hmm. And so, I grew up fast. Yes, I grew up fast, and I was very mature at a young age. So. I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot, I've studied a lot mm -hmm. of things. Um, so it was kind of like, you know how your body and your mind is filled with knowledge? Yes. So it's like my mind was just filled with all these stories and all these ideas that I was just able to finally put them on paper mm -hmm. and bring it to life. So, because I mean, we all have stories. Yes. We, we all have stories, yes, in us. but it's just been able to finally put it down on paper mm -hmm. to make a reality. So me, coming from a caregiving background, it was a little easy to yeah. develop Victoria, yeah. a little easy to develop Mr. Lane, a little. It was easier to develop all these characters. I, I love the way that you talked about um, everyone having stories. Mm -hmm. You know, and and how this book is really a a manifestation of um, you know. You talked about things that are going on in you, right? right. Your experiences and all that. Um, and and 
and to me, it takes a lot of courage, mm-hmm. um, you know, to put out your experience, experiences and to put a piece of yourself out there in the world, right? right. Because once you have Masita on Amazon, people yeah. are going to read it and people are going to judge the characters and judge you as a result because that's how um, you portray the right. characters. So it, it takes a lot of courage. And I'm really interested, and I'm sure the audience will be interested in how you actually found the courage and the motivation to put, you know, a, a really vulnerable piece of you. You know, every time we write or any time we put a piece of work out there, mm-hmm. um, there, there is a lot of vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, you know, how did you find the courage um, to draw from all of that, you know, and then write a book and then put the book out there? Well, um, it was something I will have to say I dealt with it for a few years Mm -hmm. because like I I started writing this book in 2011 and I knew once I published this book, I had to let my business go. You know, I could no longer be a caregiver because even though the book is fiction, Mm -hmm. some people will believe that, you know. Exactly. So. It's like okay, I had to make a choice. Yeah, and so and they might, uh, so they might associate the character for me, right, 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 for and, me. and 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 if they were to hire you, they would think okay, in the back of their mind, right? What right. if, what if she's working with my husband to put arsenic in my right, in my drink, right, 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 right? right. Or what if my husband hired her right. to take exactly. me out, right? Exactly, right. Or right. you know if. You know, who, you know, why is she in my life, right? right. Who hired her, right? right? So, you know, that was a choice I had to make. So I had to step out on faith with mm-hmm. that. And like, okay, I'm going to let the business go and go ahead and publish this book and promote it full time. Mm-hmm. And also, I knew that some controversy was going to come with the book. Yes. And um, before the book was even published, I was promoting the book. You know, letting people know that it was getting ready to be published mm-hmm. and, and available on Amazon. And that's when reality really hit. Because I was, you know, being called a racist writer. And um, people were saying, why do you have to write something like this? Why can't you write something positive? And a lot of people didn't even know what the book was about. Right. This they was just went by the cover. Right. right. They just went, they just basically seen, yeah. you know, African-American girl, a lady in the bed, and a white man. Right. So they didn't even really just know what it was about. And so um, I dealt with that. And my page, my mm-hmm. Facebook page, was being reported a lot. I was blocked <laughs> off my page. That's and terrible. So you got a lot of hate. Yeah. From, yeah, I did. From writing the book. And I remember um, I cried. I mm-hmm. cried for my boyfriend. I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready to deal with this. You know, this is a lot of stress, you know. And, like, the comments just were, you know, just terrible. But um, I ended up getting through it. And I was like, we are criticized every day of our life. That's true. Whether I write a book, whether I don't write a book, if I just walk into the grocery store, if I just... I just walk outside, you yes. know, and somebody sees me. I might walk outside with my robe on or my hair not combed, and I'll be criticized. So I had to, you know, basically tell myself, like, regardless of what you do, you're going to be criticized. So only difference is now you're criticized in the public's eye. Right, because it's of something you did. Right. right. So once I got over that, now it doesn't bother me no more. I don't really care, you know, I'm having the best time of my life. That's awesome. Doing book signings, meeting different people, and promoting my book. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the thing that uh, they say about, uh, you know, people who are negative or people who hate, um, it's it's more a reflection of them and what they're going through than a reflection of you. Right. Right? And and I I love the fact that you you, you, um, managed to... Uh, disregard the critics and put your book out there because like you say right right you, it's better to be criticized for something you do right. than something that you haven't done right that's, that's really awesome right. um, what's your what's your inspiration what inspires you um, I would say just sometimes 
okay, like I've, you know, worked for, you know, the private care and sometimes I've wanted to say things that I couldn't necessarily yes. say because, you know, I still have to, even though this is my own business, I still have to be professional. And sometimes I've wanted to say things to people that I felt were right. And I realized I can write a book and say whatever I want to say. And I can do whatever I want to say in my book. And to me, that is the, that's freedom yeah. to me. That's, that's the real definition of freedom of speech. That's the real definition of just doing what you want to do. So I realized writing is an escape mm -hmm. to basically let out all those feelings that you have been wanting to let out that you can, I'm pretty sure as a teacher, sometimes you want to be like, you want to say yes. things, but you cannot say it. Yes. I realize if I write a book, I can say and do whatever I want to say because yes. my character is saying it. Exactly. My character is saying it now. So to me, it was fun being able to say the things that I've been wanting to say for a long time. That's in really my book. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So the the one thing that motivates you and, and inspires you to write is this is this freedom. It's kind of like riding a motor motorbike, yes. a motorbike, yes. right? So. So, uh, you know, if you read the book or if you go to uh, Latoya's Amazon page, you would mm -hmm. see that one of her pastime is to ride in her bike. Right, uh, right. I love riding yeah. my motorcycle because I feel free then yes. and it's relaxing. Yes. Just like riding is re writing yes. now is relaxing and I feel free. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, the freedom comes with, I think, most act of creativity. Right. Because you feel like you can be yourself, you can mm -hmm. be completely authentic, um, and there's no one who's going to restrain you or censor you. Right. I guess that's exactly what art is. Yes. Art is just being free and just doing whatever you want to do. Yes. And when you're completely free, the impact that you make on the world is going to be um, the most positive. Right. Yeah. The, we, we've talked a little bit about the facing your critique. Mm -hmm. But let's talk, let's shift gear and let's talk a bit about the positive impact that you've had with the book. So it's, it, it was published in July of this mm -hmm. year, um, you know, and you, you've been on a variety of speaking engagements and you've been on book tours and book mm -hmm. signing. Um, yeah, talk a little bit about the positive impact that you've had in the world around you um, in, in, in your personal life through the book. Okay, I will say for me, it's when people come to the book signing and they come up to the table and they ask, okay, what is this book about? And then I tell them, well, it's basically, it's a four part series about a young African-American woman who starts working as a caregiver for white wealthy families and they start paying her to kill their loved ones. It's seeing the shock on their yes. face, like, most of them are like, wait a minute, what now? You know. Yes, and that was the feeling I had when I when you first told me that. Yeah. I thought, well, how? <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I have to get the book. Right. So to me, like, that that's priceless. Yes. And then to hear so many people who have read my book. You know, some people still come to book side like, I read your book. It was so good I'm getting one for my daughter or I'm getting one for my husband or like to me that makes me feel really really good and it makes it all worth it mm -hmm. it makes it worth giving up my caregiving service yes. it makes worth all the sacrifices I've made you know doing this full time and you know the sleepless nights sitting up writing because I can't go to sleep because I've already written the second book oh wow yes yeah, so I've written the second book so to me like that's prices and it makes it worth it and then like meeting so many different people mm -hmm. and seeing that different people from different races mm -hmm. have read my book and they love my book. So that makes me feel good. Yes. And, and I think um, the, the really unique thing about your book is that it's centered in Mississippi, mm -hmm. which historically has been the, you know, the, the center. <laughs> For injustice and racism. Right. Uh, the reason why Latoya keeps looking back there is because uh, she's babysitting her niece. Yeah. 
and uh, her niece is is going through her purse and trying to get her uh, lip gloss. Lip gloss. <laughs> so and that's the reason why we keep looking back that way. Uh, I think she has one. <laughs> She's gotten it out. But, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. But um, yeah, Mississippi is you know historically known for racism and bigotry and crazy all of that. So yes. And 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 it's it's great because people who have not lived in the deep south, mm -hmm. um, you know, to to them this is just history. You right. Know, this is something that happened in eighteen seventy five. Right. When we when we signed the um, or when the state ratified the the Thirteenth Amendment, right, right. that abolished uh, slavery. And, and interestingly enough, Mississippi did not ratify the Thirteenth Amendment until twenty thirteen. Right, right. <laughs> yes. um, I remember that. Yes, yes. Uh, and and it's so interesting because um, when you have you know when you put that part of you into a book and it circulates worldwide, mm -hmm. you know people have first hand experience of right. the racism, the bigotry, uh, the prejudices mm -hmm. um, that actually exist, like even today. Right. Um, and so so that's. That that really struck me about the book, um, especially since I didn't grow up in I didn't grow up in Mississippi, let alone the U.S. I didn't grow up in the U.S. Um, but but reading the book that really came to light for me. Right, and then like it talks about it, and then it's kind of like it shines light on it, and then it kind of moves on, and then it's like okay, here we go again, you know. Yeah. When is that coming out? July the 29th. Next year? Yeah. Okay. Every July the 29th, ah. I will put out a book. Okay. Is there a it's reason a why it's well, July the 29th? Yes. Um, actually, my significant other, mm -hmm. um, he was basically my backbone mm -hmm. to me completing the book and completing my next book and just... <laughs> allow me to be my full creative self mm -hmm. so because he financially had my back yep. so he was like okay you focus on your writing I believe in you and I'm gonna you know handle all of this you know I got your back and so like if you've ever been to, like my full book signings not the one that was um, at Lemire you will see like I have like all these different logos and different designs, like plaid is like mm -hmm. my signature color. And so I was able to sit and think about all the things I wanted to do once I started going on my book tours and how I wanted my book signs to look, how I wanted my logos to look, how I wanted to look. Mm -hmm. I was able to do that because he was there is my backup. You know, he was there as my backup. That's so, amazing. So, July the 29th is actually his birthday. Ah. So, I published the book on his birthday. And so, every year on his birthday, I publish another book. That's amazing. It's, you're giving honor, honoring yeah. his, his role in this whole right. um, adventure. Right. Because if it wasn't for him, mm -hmm. I, I don't believe I would have done as much as I've done. Yeah. And I don't think I've, I don't even know if Miss City would be complete right now. Cause right. Because I was, you know, I was working. So, um, you know, to be able to be a full-time author has allowed me to really have, be free to yes. create and do all the things I want to do. Yes. So. I love, I love how you've turned your life completely around. You gave up, you gave up your business. Mm -hmm. You are a creator. You're writing, doing really great work. Yes. More importantly, you're living the life that you love. Yes. Uh, you know, for for my out my audience out there, you know, for those of those in the audience who want to be creators, but haven't haven't taken the first step yet. You know, whether it's to write a book or to paint, you know, to write a movie script, right? Or you know, whatever that whatever stopping them from mm -hmm. taking that first step. What's your uh, practical um, advice Advice. Okay. Uh, to help them make the first step? I would say the first step is to start. 
it's like don't think about it just do it a lot of times if we think about things we will talk ourselves out of it like if we think about okay if i start this i might not be able to cook today or if i stay up too late writing or painting i'll be sleepy tomorrow so i'm not gonna start this today or if I start this, how am I going to pay for this? Or how? Like we talk ourselves out of things, mm-hmm. just like I had talked myself out of completing it for all this time. I said, okay, if you complete this, you're not going to be able to have your caregiving service. So how are you going to pay your bills and this and that? So in my situation, I fell off my motorcycle. I broke my ankle, and I fell out, I fell in a pothole in Jackson. No That's, surprise. Yes, and. And Jackson is filled with potholes. Filled with potholes. So I fell in a pothole in Jackson and I broke my ankle in three places. I had to have surgery. So I couldn't walk for five months. So it's like I had nothing to do but to finish my sitter. And so to me, that was the best fall a girl could have had in her life. Because I would have never finished the book. But to anyone else, don't wait until you fall in a pothole to complete something. If you can do like one page a day, if you're writing, one page a day. If you want to be a screenwriter, one page a day. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an artist, you just and you love drawing, draw a little something today. Draw, draw, draw your head today. Draw the body tomorrow. Draw the arms the week. You know, yes, it's just starting. Yeah, and and it sounds like you're saying that. We need to make creative creativity a priority, right? Right, um, and that's because a, it's a stress reliever. Yes. Me writing this was a real stress reliever because I could be in my own little world. Yes. I would put my headphones on, and I would wait until you know my kids are asleep, everybody's asleep, the house is quiet, and I was still writing until like six and seven o'clock in the morning because I just couldn't stop. And I found myself a lot of times laughing at my character, yeah. laughing at some of the stuff I was like, some of the things in the book are funny. I'm even laughing now thinking about some of the stuff I've written in this yes. book. So some of the things in the book are funny. So I would find myself up laughing at the stuff I've written. Um, even with my editors and my proofreaders, they were like, right, comes like, this is hilarious, you know. So I'm like, okay, so that is funny, you know. Yes. But it's just, it's a stress reliever. It really is a stress reliever. And like I said, you can write whatever you want to write in the book. You can draw whatever you want to draw for your artist. And just being able to give something to the world that no one else has given, no one else has thought to give, is phenomenal. Yes. That's so great advice. That is awesome advice. Yeah, and and so many times we are so afraid Mm -hmm. to create and and starting little by little. Little by little. And build your confidence. Right. You you cannot write a book. Well, some people probably could write a book in one day, but we all know you, well, average person. Most of us. (laughs) Most of us can't. You can't write a book in one day. So if you just start one page at a time or just start, just start. And once you start, Kind of make it your priority, you know. If, if you know, if you have to work and you know you have a family and all this, and still don't neglect mm-hmm. this because at the end, your family is so proud of you. Because my family is so proud of me, my kids are like so proud of me. Yes. My significant other is so proud of me, and so that makes me feel good. Yeah, you know, that yeah. makes me feel good. And I'm pretty sure if you're out there listening, it'll make you feel good once, you know, your family or your loved ones can say, hey, I went to their art show. Like, this is my husband's or my wife's or my mom's art show, you know. So. Latoya, thank you so much. Thank you. And um, the reason why we need to cut the short is yeah. <laughs> lunch. There is going to be lunch here at the museum at the museum um, pretty soon. Right. Um, you know, but we've learned so much from you. Yes. And, and Masita is in uh, 
on Amazon, uh -huh. and that's the, the best place to get it. Yeah, and the, and the signed copies also in um, the house, in the mirror. Yeah. Okay. The, there are also signed copies in um, La Maria Bookstore um, if you're in Jackson. Um, and La Maria Bookstore is an independent um, bookstore, um, private bookstore um, in Banner Hall. Right. Um, on I-55, correct, um, and you can get signed copies of the book there. Um, but if you're anywhere else, um, and it's difficult to get there, the book is also available on Amazon. Uh -huh. um, and you have Prime Meal in two days. Yes, and we're going to be on the lookout for the next installment. Right. July 29th, 2020, part two, uh -huh. part two of Masita, and we will continue with uh, victorious um, adventures. Right. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you. You've reached the end of another episode of the Heart Centered Life podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, head over to elinaboyd.com for our free resources and materials and to access the show notes for today's podcast. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes.